This video is on key security frameworks. Security frameworks exist to reduce an organization's exposure to weaknesses and vulnerabilities. These standards include controls that help companies implement to protect data. Organizations should carefully examine the standard they choose to ensure it aligns with their unique needs and company's culture. We have Center for Internet Security which is a nonprofit organization that harnesses the worldwide IT community's capacity to protect private and public enterprises from cyber threats. It guides the global community in securing the internet and provides global standards and accepted best practices for safeguarding IT systems. They have developed a framework called Critical Security Controls, which are a prioritized set of safeguards to mitigate the most prevalent cyber attacks against systems and networks. The goal of CIS framework is to help your organization identify and respond to cyber threats. They are mapped to and referenced by multiple legal, regulatory, and policy frameworks. CIS controls version 8 is the latest one, and it has been enhanced to keep up with the modern systems and software. NIST CSF cybersecurity framework was mainly created for the private sector, while NIST RMF risk management framework was designed mostly for use by government entities but both can be applied to private organizations. Risk management framework is a mandate for federal agencies while CSF is a voluntary commercial framework. CSF provides cross-references so that organizations using RMF can see where and how CSF aligns with the current steps in the RMF. Conversely, if you're using the CSF, you can bring in the RMF and give your organization a robust methodology to manage security and privacy risks. NIST, CSF, and RMF are a set of guidelines for mitigating organizational cybersecurity risks. It integrates industry's standards and best practices to help organizations manage their cybersecurity risks. It provides guidance on how to manage and reduce IT infrastructure security risks, and is made up of standards, guidelines, and practices that can be used to prevent, detect, and respond to cyber attacks. Then we have the ISO series, International Organization for Standardization. The 27001 is the central framework of the ISO 27000 series, which is a series of documents relating to various parts of information security management. 27002 is a supplementary standard that focuses on the information security controls that organizations might choose to implement. ISO 27001 is a management standard that provides full list of compliance requirements, whereas supplementary standards such as ISO 27002 address one specific aspect of ISMS. If you're starting out with the standard or are planning your ISMS implementation framework, ISO 27001 is ideal. You should refer to ISO 27002 once you identify the controls that you'll be implementing to learn more about how each one works. ISO 27701 is a framework for data privacy that builds on ISO 27001. This latest privacy best practice guides organizations on policies and procedures that should be in place to comply with GDPR and other data protection privacy regulations and laws. The ISO 31000 is intended to serve as a guide for design, implementation, and maintenance of risk management. Its standard lays forth general concepts and standards for businesses follow when dealing with risks. Any organization, regardless of size, activity, or sector, can use it. It can also assist organizations in increasing the possibility of meeting goals, improving identification opportunities and threats, and effectively allocating and using resources for risk management. The teams that analyze security procedures should be aware of the output and reporting capabilities for the data. Any critical information must be reported to management teams immediately so that they are aware of the risk or harm. The type of reports that must be utilized depends on the type of auditing that is being done. A Service Organization Control SOC report is required by American Statement on Standards for Attestation Engagement SSAE. There are four main types of SOC reports, SOC 1, 2, 3, and SOC for cybersecurity with subsets of each. SOC 1 report focuses on outsourced services performed by service organizations which are relevant to a company's financial reporting. There are two types of SOC 1 reports. Type 1 reports are concerned with systems of a service organization. It also includes reporting on the control's adequacy for achieving the goal. 
the findings of an audit as well as the completeness and correctness of documented controls, systems, and facilities are outlined in this report. Type 2 reports are focused on the systems of service organizations and include report on whether the control is running properly to fulfill its goal. The Type 1 report is included as well as information on the effectiveness of the procedures and controls in place for the near future. SOC 2 report is an attestation report issued by the independent certified public accounting firm. Its focus addresses operational risk of outsourcing to third-party outside financial reporting. These reports are based on the trust services criteria which include up to five categories, security, availability, processing integrity, confidentiality, and or privacy. There are two types of SOC2 reports. Type 1 audit reports are placed in operation at a specific point in time. Type 2 reports auto test the effectiveness of controls over a period of time. SOC 3 report, formerly known as SysTrust or WebTrust, covers similar reporting areas as SOC 2 but isn't as comprehensive. The benefit of SOC 3 is that it is a general use report making it a great tool for marketing purposes. In a SOC 4 cybersecurity report, a CPA reports an organization's enterprise-wide cybersecurity risk management program. In a SOC for cybersecurity report, a CPA reports on an organization's enterprise-wide cybersecurity risk management program. The type of assessment a business chooses will depend on its services and business models. Then we have Cloud Security Alliance, which is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to encourage implementation of best practices for providing security assurance in cloud computing. Cloud Security Alliance has Cloud Control Matrix, which is a cybersecurity control framework for cloud computing. It provides fundamental security principle to guide cloud vendors and assist prospective cloud customers in assessing the entire security risk of a cloud provider. And it provides organizations with needed structure in detail and clarity and related information security tailored into cloud industry. And it also provides operational risk management and standardized security and seek to normalize security expectations, cloud taxonomy, and terminology. They also have reference architecture, which provides a template solution for architecture for a particular domain. It is a document or set of documents that provides recommended structures and integration of IT products and services to form a solution. The reference architecture embodies accepted industry best practices, typically suggesting the optimal delivery method for specific technologies. A reference architecture offers IT best practices in an easy-to-understand format that guides the implementation of complex technology solutions.